what you see is what you become. Okay, let's get into this. Dr. Robert Kassar, eartheracademy.com. This is another rethinking reality because, well, at this time, we're all thinking different realities, different perspectives, different ideas, and a lot of different things. So, when you go ahead and look into simple life, you can see how the human race is very easy to program, and so is the animal race in domestication. Okay? But what you see is what you become is real. And just to be able to sort of wrap your head around, if you're watching violence, then what you see is what you become. If you're watching a show or shows that are showing you how to cheat, swindle, get away with stuff, not get punished, ways to trick people, what do you think happens? When you start hearing, okay, it's not only what you hear is what you start to say, okay, it's but what you see is what you start to become. So these are all very powerful ways to be able to program the human psyche. So watching television, or what I call the television, right, okay, gives you a way for you to be able to, to entertain yourself, to be able to maybe get some information, or just to be able to, I don't know, spend the time, is because you're bored. What you watch, remember, has a lot to do with, with everything. Okay, if you're watching nature all the time, what do you think happens to you? You become grounded like nature. And if you live in the city, then, well, so shall you be dysfunctional like the city. Terrain modification is very simple, too. It's where you live has a lot to do with the way you think. What you see has a lot to do with the way you may act. And what you hear, well, that's just drama for your mama because most of the things we hear is hearsay. If you're not there to be able to prove the truth, then, then how could you say it even happened, especially when you know in a place you live is, is loaded with trickery, loaded with, you can say, booby traps too, to be able to put you on a path that is not the path you want to go on. <clears throat> so, what you see is what you become. So watching television is a, a good weapon, okay, for things that you don't want to be, and it's a good tool for things that you may want to be also. It's not just all evil, it's not just all good. It depends on what you are watching, because there's a variety of everything Okay, on television, on the internet, whatever you want to watch is, again, a lot of times is where you become, okay, another person. So, let's look and, well, let's just say that you're, you're watching horror films, okay, there is technology in the smart tech to be able to put us into an alpha state that gives us, you can call it a dead mind, to be able to absorb things. And if you feel anything from what you're watching, that means that your mind's buying into it. It's buying into it. It's like it's better than real. is because you know it's fake, but to you, why are you scared? Why do you have nightmares or dreams of things that when you wake up, you can't remember your dream, but you just know that whatever your dream was showing you or where you were at at that time, you didn't like it. But the question is why? Are you programming your own mind? How about this idea? The things that you see during the day is for your conscious mind. I'm looking at nature right now. I'm looking at palm trees. I'm looking at the birds fly. Okay. 
my consciousness sees that in this dimension. If I watch television, that's a backlit screen. This is different here. It's a whole different set of light. And remember, there's a thing called a flicker rate. Flick, 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 and then clip. Remember, side shot, side angle, front angle, all these different views okay, that you get when you watch television. The music, da da da. Okay, these are all things that they add to the television. Because if you watch television, just turn down the sound, it's like the movie's stupid. Okay, it doesn't look real. It just looks like a lot of a lot of fast cuts all the time, keeping your mind very busy just to be able to not really have critical thinking, but to be able to to constantly be aroused. So if you're buying into what you see, that means you might have fear. It means you might have whatever you're watching. And that transfers to your subconscious mind is because you're looking through an artificial machine. So it's a little difficult to explain, but what you look at on the television, what you look at on your computer screen, remember, is in a blue light system. How about this is programming your subconscious mind, and the subconscious mind is when you sleep at night, subconscious, behind the conscious mind. The conscious mind is, is conscious, like mine is right now today, but my subconscious mind will come out tonight, the one behind the veil. And when I'm in that world, that world is a real world. So what if you were programmed, or your, your subconscious was programmed, because when you're watching the television, or when you're watching these computer programs, then maybe you're programming not only the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind. And what does that have to do with anything? Do you believe in dark forces? Do you believe in energies that are vampires that are here to be able to take your energy field in, in any way it can as long as you give it to this parasite? How about this parasite? I talk about a lot of parasites. This parasite is, is not physical. How about an ethereal parasite? An ethereal parasite. You know it's real only because your mind has been programmed in the day. And when you go to sleep at night, you can call it the fourth dimension, whatever you want to call it. It's another layer of consciousness. But when you go there, your mind now has programmed, your conscious mind has programmed your subconscious mind to have all that information swimming around in it. So if you're watching a movie right before you go to bed of murder and theft and whatever it is, okay? These are the things that you're programming your mind with, not only in the day, but also at night. So a lot of people have insomnia right now, and they wake up in the middle of the night, and they, they don't want to really jump back into their dream. It's because they didn't even know they had a dream. How about a lot of people don't dream at all? Does that mean you don't dream, or does that just mean that, that when you disconnect from that dimension, the nighttime dimension, you can call it the dimension of no form, is because your form, your body, is in a, in a disassociated state compared to during the day. My consciousness is looking around, decoding the matrix, but at night, my eyes are closed, and I'm in another space with different rules and different boundaries. <clears throat> A lot of people will say in their dreams, I do, do you fly in your dreams? And, and do, you, do you have the ability to do things that you cannot do in this world? And you know that that world, of course, you have the ability to do it. Because in this world, you can't fly up to the telephone pole and do a flip and land perfectly in the air. And of course, you're showing everybody in your dream that you can do these things is because, remember, your nighttime brain and your daytime brain have probably been washed. So maybe part of our sanity is to be able to disconnect from this reality and go into another reality of no form to be able to play as children while you sleep.
I had a lot of nightmares when I was a child, a lot, because we used to watch a lot of scary, scary horror films. So you can see this causes a lot of stress in people, a lot. It's because they don't, if, first of all, if you don't get good sleep, that means that during the day, the next day, and maybe you didn't get sleep the next night, and during the day that day, and of course you didn't get sleep that night, and during the day that day, each day keeps getting, you feel that you've been drained, drained dry of energy. You wake up in the morning, you did sleep, but you felt like you didn't. And like I said, I've gone over lots of videos on, on do you really think that you can sleep deep with your Wi-Fi on in your house? or any of the other smart devices that you have in your house. Do you think you can? I know I can't. <clears throat> so when I go to California, I'm constantly swimming in microwaves everywhere, everywhere. So in about two weeks, I start to feel sick. And that's what happens to me every time. Went to Vegas for three days and the power in the air is off the hook. We're at a convention there. Family puts on a convention every year over there. Had like seven, 8,000 people show up to it. It's a products ex expo. And everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody's got the, the connection in the air, okay? Very strong Wi-Fi routers, towers, everywhere. And in order for you to be in a building, that cement or metal walls, a lot of the transmissions don't go through those because everybody's got good wireless, even in the elevator. They've got wireless tech in every bedroom. Okay. I tested my alarm clock and I had to pull the plug. I brought my acoustometer there and this thing is just bzzz, right next to where I'm gonna, my head's gonna sleep, an alarm clock. So, you know, when I go to a hotel, I unplug the television too. I don't need the thing. If I'm gonna watch it, it's one thing but I don't need that thing 24 seven doing that. So do you think that, let's say when you go onto your phone and you wanna hook up to a Wi-Fi spot and you look on your phone and it's got 10, 20, 30 different Wi-Fi's that you could pick. Look how many people are saturating that air, okay? So, do you think it's possible that the guy next door, you're all hard, hard wire up in, in let's say your apartment, but the guy next door, he's got Wi-Fi, he's got every wireless device that you could think of, wireless mouse, wireless keypad, wireless security bills. Okay, he's got smart television, he's got a smart stove, he's got smart everything. So let's say he's watching television and he's watching pornographic debauchery and why do you watch that is the, is the question and and when you do watch that like I said do you have little little dreams in your head about sexuality because you just programmed your mind beforehand you can do yourself you know any type of experiment and watch some movies and see if you can as you wake up in the middle of the night to urinate or whatever write down what you could remember about the dream you were in was it good was it bad what was it about? Was it sexual? Was it happy? Were you in fear? Were you running away from somebody? Did you wake up in a cold sweat? What's the deal? So if the guy next door is watching porno, what do you think happens to you? Think about it. It's flying through the air, all this information. Remember, fourth generation gives people live stream. Do you think that that information is just going to his phone or is it swimming around his apartment and all the other places with all the other people watching movies flying through the air? Do you think your biology would see that dysfunction? Remember, your telephone picks up all that signal, all that invisible signal in the air, and it translates it onto your telephone, okay? Onto your television, your television, whatever it is, through the air. Pretty incredible magic, that's all I can say. But biologically, do you think that that would be any, would it make any difference in your sleeping patterns? All I can say is 
that if you have not disconnected from all wireless sources for about two or three weeks, four weeks, and you don't feel a thing, of course, if you did disconnect from all these wireless sources and once you went into, like I'm going into Hilo right now, I can feel it already. I'm starting to get scrambled because this place is microwave and it's just a small city, but it's got a ton of microwaves swimming everywhere. Towers everywhere. So everybody can have their wireless. Anyways, this goes deep. The idea is that we are what we see, what we hear, okay? And the environment that we live in, this is what we become. I'm coming to the city and all cities in my, my mind are of course artificial because man made them, they're artificial, right? Some of the things that they put in the city are natural, like the trees I'm seeing, the coconut trees, and the way they're positioned, of course, is, is man's way. But with everything aside, if you didn't have the wireless here, then this place wouldn't be, well, as dysfunctional as, as it is. There's lots of research on, on programming your mind by watching the things that you do. Okay, Paula Tricks. If you buy into those stories, then of course that takes up your energy field to be able to, to speak to other people that also are taking up their energy field, talking about things that you can't do anything about. Nothing about. Nothing. And until you figure that out, well, you're going to spend maybe a lot of time and energies because that's the things that they're showing us is everybody fighting over everything. What is right is wrong. What is wrong is right. What is up is down. Down is up. What is forward is, of course, not so because it's going in reverse. Obtuse and backwards is the theme, as you can see. Anyways... Life, again, is what you make out of it. And playing chess is the game of life. That's the way I look at it. The game of chess. And it all depends on how much neural net activity you have activated in su cabeza, en sucesos. Okay? The less activation you have, the less neural net activity you have in your brain, well, the less you can decode the matrix. Remember, it's not what you look at, it's what you see, what you can transcribe. A three-year-old girl, three-year-old boy, has the same eyes when they're 30 years old, when they're 60 years old, when they're 90, but it's consciousness, it's what you look at, okay? Doesn't mean you see what you look at. I'm looking at a ton of stuff right now and how much, how much information can my consciousness absorb from the sounds, from not just looking straight ahead, but feeling the peripheral, seeing the peripheral, seeing the landscape, getting all that information to be able to make sense in my mind. And most people, remember, you have what's called pinpoint, very small, you can call it telescopic consciousness, which means that you don't really have that much landscape. Landscape meaning that you're not getting much more information than the information that your eyes can only see. <clears throat> and I'm talking about what you're trying to directly see, not peripherally. And no one can explain consciousness, it's just what it is. But we can see how easy it is to manipulate is because the television, remember, the HD quality, the high pixel rate, is better than what we see in real life. It's more clear, the, the colors are more vibrant. It's not real, but it's more real than the world we live in. So you can see why people are easily conned by, you know, it's, again, magic, magic. So, if, you're watching a lot of television, okay, again, be careful, careful what you're watching. That's all I can tell you. 
best thing to do is not watch anything at all. And, and if you want to watch a movie, well, that's fine. Maybe go ahead and get DVDs. Hardwire your house. That changes a lot of the ways that you will probably be able to sleep much better. And if you're not sleeping good, then all you can do is give it a try. Disconnect from as much as you can from all of the, you can call it wireless tech. Getting educated is is a way to be able to sidetrack a lot of the things that you know that aren't good for you. But if you don't know they're not good for you, or if you can't feel them that they're not good for you, like right now, I'm scrambled in here right now. I'm, I'm driving underneath these high magnetic um, uh, electrical lines. They're all kicking out a certain energy that, of course, is an electrical magnetic field. And if you're not used to it, you will feel it. And if you're used to it, you're just swimming in it anyways. You're like a fish member that swims in the water and, and the fish never questions anything about the water is because its consciousness won't let them. That's all it is. What will your consciousness let you do is the question. Okay, so I'm gonna go work out at the gym here. Shut everything down. Take this thing off the rack here for a sec. So, there's the gym right there. Super nice gym inside. I mean, it's a treasure to have that in this town here, is to have this beautiful new gym, especially if you work out. And it's got a lot of people in there that are in good shape. Because everybody in there is a very small percentage of all the people that live out here. Very few. Meaning that there's a lot of people in there that are, that are looking healthy. They look healthy. Maybe they're not healthy in their mind or whatever, but they look healthy and they're exercising, which of course is, is making them happy. Because that's what exercise does. It, it stimulates your endorphins and resets a lot of your brain chemicals when you train with intensity. So anyways, just to sum this all up here, what do we got, 23 minutes? What you see is what you become. And that goes, you know, for seeing a lot of things. So be careful in not, I just look at the, the world we live in. The world we live in is like a computer program to me. It's like a, a, a realm. Okay, it's a, a experience place to be able to, to be able to, to, well, experience different things that I can't experience if I don't have a body. Remember, I feel things, I smell things, I, I am feeling the sun right now. I'm looking at the beautiful clouds up there. Look at that. Okay, with the blue sky. So, life is a miracle, and when you know that, life is, is way more, you can, you can feel fulfilled when you feel life is a miracle. That's all. Anyways, time to go work out. Be careful what you watch on the television, and I would suggest not, you know, participating in any of those any of those shoot 'em up movies, debauchery, and once you become possessed, okay, there are demonic energies here. You can call them whatever you want to call them; doesn't matter. And if you're having nightmares, that means most likely that well, that you've got possession. So, how are you going to remove possession? Well. First of all, stop stop in engaging in everything that you feel that where your possession came from. Anyways, enough. Okay, guys, aloha, and we will see you on the next video. So watch yourself. All right, we'll see you. Aloha.